This is an $80,000 sim racing rig. It is. <laughs> and no matter where we go, this is the main attraction. It gets a lot of oohs, a lot of ahs. This is a professional level training simulator from the motion all the way to the triple screens. We have all high-end hardware associated with it. And the most important element of this simulator, what makes it so expensive, is this six degree of freedom motion platform. About six months ago, we shared with you how you could get started in PCA Sim Racing. We showed you some basic rigs, some components, things that you could put together and get started. Well, today we're going to take you to the other end of the spectrum. We're here with Matt from Spark Virtual Racing and check out the rigs that he's brought here at PCA headquarters. How are you, Matt? Fantastic, Boo. Thank you for having us. We're happy to be here. Well, you guys are from Connecticut and I really appreciate you trailering down all this equipment to show us how advanced sim racing really can be. And why don't you share with us what you brought? Sure. Yeah, this came together really quickly. We were happy to make the trip. Um, couldn't believe that it all worked out. So what we brought are two completely turnkey simulators. That's what our company does. We exist so that you don't have to go through the headaches and the frustrations of building your own simulator, the research, the building, and then on top of all that, the tuning. Now, these aren't cheap. They're not. I guess it depends on who you ask. Right. Correct. I would agree. But these are neither are Porsches, neither is going club racing, neither is doing DEs. But if you want the best of the best, what you're doing is you're sourcing individual parts for the end users needs or wants and putting it together for them. We are. We take the best hardware from around the world. And the analogy that we like to make is to truly build a high end simulator. If you wanted to do it yourself, you need to be both a race engineer and a software engineer. Right. You know that most people are neither. And that's what we are at this point. We're both race engineers, software engineers, so that rather than go through those headaches yourself, we provide something that you can just decide to have and we take care of it for you. So this is the entry level, let's say, version that you offer? Absolutely. So what does this entail? Our systems, first of all, start at 9700 and that's completely turnkey. All hardware, all software, custom built computer, and we're not a company that just drops it on your doorstep and says good luck. We try to build the cleanest solutions we can. So behind the screen is where all of the engine is, basically, if you want to make it into a car. There's a custom-built computer back there, but what we really like to do is simplify it on the user end. So we have a racing seat. We have a high-end direct-drive steering wheel, 55-inch 4K screen. And what we see on a lot of simulators is they don't have a realistic field of view. So the reason that the screen is so close is so that the field of view is realistic. And when we get to the model next to me, you'll see the triple screens, which adds a whole new dimension. But this system also has uh, an H pattern shifter for those that might be 944 drivers or 911 drivers. Nice. You have a six speed and then you have three pedals down there as well. There's an integrated sound system. And this system we retail for $17,000. That is again, this particular setup. This exact system in front of us. We wouldn't normally have wheels on it. This is our mobile unit. If it's going into someone's home, it would be a more permanent installation. But yes, for $17,000, this is what we deliver. So the customer purchases this setup. Do you do what you did like here yesterday, roll up in a trailer, unload it and slide it into their basement or their, their, their play cave or whatever? That's exactly what we do. Okay. And to build on what I mentioned earlier that we don't just drop it on your doorstep, we do white glove installation. And then the final step in the process to really put value in the simulator is actually a tailored car setup session. Because we hear from a lot of top drivers that, oh, I drove a simulator at an event. It didn't feel right. I don't like those things. That technology isn't good enough. Well, as we've heard today from the PCA office, this technology really is good enough to behave like your car. But what we do is sit down with the driver and they might have their car behave in a certain way based on how their mechanic sets it up. We can actually do that on the software side so that not only are you learning tracks, but the car in the sim is behaving just like your real world car. And then you're learning your line around the track, your braking points, your steering inputs. So PCA Sim Racing, the primary platform is iRacing. Is that the, the case with, with your setup or are there other software games or, or systems that you can use? There are others. What we're running today, and I know Jim requested this because this is his go-to, we're running iRacing with a 911 GT3R at Road America. However, a lot of our clients prefer to have their exact car put into the software and that's where a piece of software called the Seto Corsa is a bit better. 
we can actually work with a company that builds your exact car if you so choose. That's of course a, a high dollar. As opposed option. to choosing a car that's an option of the software, they're building your exact car. You can get that, yes. Wow. So IMSA teams each season, they call this company that we work with and they have their car made down to each nut and bolt that you turn in order for them to prep before they go to each track because racing teams get so little time on track, they wanna do their work in the simulator ahead of time. Okay, so let's move on to, I think what most viewers are interested in is, this is an $80,000 sim racing rig. It is. <laughs> and no matter where we go, this is the main attraction. It gets a lot of oohs, a lot of ahs. This is a professional level training simulator from the motion all the way to the triple screens. We have all high-end hardware associated with it. And the most important element of this simulator, what makes it so expensive, is this six degree of freedom motion platform. This right here? Yes. Okay. And so underneath this base, there's actuators, there's motors, there's a platform. If you take a million dollar Formula One simulator that all the teams have at their facilities, and you boil it down to something that could fit in your home, that's exactly what it is that we're looking at right here. Now, I've, I've driven other you know, simulators with motion and they have like shocks and arms and this is very compact. And the others seem more like an amusement ride. And I think when we were talking earlier, that's not the goal of this rig. It's not. And in order to be a training tool, we can't be an amusement ride. Right. So part of our goal as a company is to provide something that is very simple to look at. You mentioned all kinds of bars and things. They may or may not be necessary mm -hmm. to the simulator in question. But our rationale behind our motion isn't to try to replicate G-forces because even multi-million dollar simulators can't necessarily replicate sustained G-forces. Right. And that's the argument that you hear a lot of the time that, oh, I drove in that simulator and I couldn't feel the G-forces. The simulator only ever moves zero miles an hour. It doesn't move from where it is. Right. right. You can't replicate that. Exactly. And so our rationale behind our motion is communicate information to the driver that gives you the information you need to feel the car thus turning it into something that you can actually learn, okay, when it does this, I need to do this. And what we do by creating that type of motion is move from something that is fun and awesome to something that when you do drive this car at Road America, we expect it to behave exactly like that. So aside from the visual obvious, you know, three huge screens that immerses you into the driving experience, the, the steering wheel setup looks fairly similar the pedals look fairly similar. So is the, the, the cost of this unit primarily in the base? Primarily, yes. Okay. Along with the fact that this simulator has all of the available upgrades. So we do offer upgraded pedals. This does have those upgraded pedals. Both of the simulators that we brought here have direct drive steering wheels. We always recommend a direct drive steering wheel. We hear from a lot of drivers that have only driven a belt driven wheel. Right. When they move up to this, they realize that the feedback is just that much quicker. And so we, it's the first recommendation we make. With the second being the screens, it's interesting you hear from people that sit down and they say, oh, well, I don't look at the side screens. Well, you don't actually, but you're always using your peripheral vision, sure. whether you know it or not. And so what the screens allow you to do is understand how quickly you're braking, because even though you're looking forward, your eyes are always processing how quickly you're slowing down in your peripheral vision. So although it takes up more space, this whole system is eight feet by nine feet, the triple screens are a very, very important upgrade. The brains or the muscle behind all of this is actually behind the screen. That's where the computer is and that's where all of the electronics are. Again, we go for the cleanest aesthetic we possibly can. And so rather than seeing all kinds of cabling and all kinds of wires, this whole system runs off single button start and one outlet. Oh, wow. So rather than needing to run cables. Keeping it simple house, for someone like me. Exactly. That just wants to hop in and drive. That's why we exist. We keep it simple. So can you tell me what this piece this piece back here is? Sure. So that is a butt kicker vibration system. Is it literally called a butt kicker? That's the brand. Oh, that's the brand. <laughs> and so what it does is provide haptic feedback to the driver. Okay. We can actually tailor that to provide different pieces of information based on what's going on. So it's like a mechanical uh, vibration piece? It is. Okay. And there's an amp in the, what you call the engine back there. Okay. Powers it and it can all be customized to what the driver prefers, along oh. with the motion. Okay. And so I, I'll, I'll admit it, I'm, I'm quite delicate in when I do these driving simulations and, and those amusement rides that I've, I've tried before, like I, I do get motion sickness. So I'm assuming you can tailor this to the driver so that they don't get sick or do you just have to you know plow through it and just kind of get used to it? 
There's a little bit of both. Okay. We ran these simulators in a commercial environment pre-COVID. And so we've had thousands of hours of feedback and hundreds of iterations on the motion and every aspect of what you see here down to the force feedback and the way the pedals are calibrated. So we actually run at a basically a three to 5% percentage chance that you are going to get motion sick. And for most- You haven't had me yet. I've only driven that one. <laughs> Correct. So what I will allow for there is that a certain percentage of people will get motion sick no matter what. It's very rare. Okay. And oh. for people who do, we have it calibrated to be as realistic as possible, even down to the field of view. So if your eyes are trying to adjust a field of view that isn't realistic, yeah. you're more likely to get motion sick. Oh, okay. And so while in the beginning you might experience a little bit of dizziness, we find that within a couple minutes on the simulator, you're you're locked in, you're moved past that, and then it just becomes addicting. So I've seen other um, simulator rigs where they eliminate the use of screens altogether and go with sort of a goggles setup. Is that available with this and do you prefer it or why mo monitors versus goggles? We made the switch to screens during COVID and our entertainment center used to run VR headsets. VR headsets, that's what yes. I'm thinking, okay. So virtual reality is absolutely incredible, specifically at the high end range of headsets. It puts you in the cockpit of the car and what I described earlier with the triple screens of understanding how quickly you're slowing down, because VR is 3D, it's it's natural, it's intuitive. Ah, uh, okay. The hang up is that you are more likely to get motion sick in VR, but again, the way we have the system calibrated, it's to minimize the number of people that get motion sick. And so VR is something that we do specialize in for drivers that are interested in it. Okay. We recommend testing first, but VR is... So it would be even more compact if you're comfortable with the VR setup you don't get motion sickness, but you still want to buy this, like then it would be really compact. You wouldn't have sort of this width and setup. Exactly. Very cool. So the proof in the pudding, so to speak, is to get our uh, A-game drivers here at PCA headquarters. Let them take a couple laps and let's get their impression. We can't wait. All right. All right, let's go. Wow, no, that was fun. It's no secret that I love sim racing and getting a chance to sit in a rig like this is, is absolutely fantastic. Um, I, I do this at home almost every day. And if this is the entry level system, I'm very impressed. Um, obviously the steering wheel and the pedals are a major upgrade from what I have at home. And this direct drive uh, steering wheel is, is phenomenal. And Matt was telling me that they've got a custom setup in terms of the force feedback that provides a lot of, of direct uh, uh, correlation between what happens on the track and what's happening in your hands. And just being able to drive this, this entry level system has been a real pleasure. And I'm doing better lap times in this than I'm doing at home. And I've only been driving this for a very short time. So really, really enjoyed this uh, setup. As Vu said earlier, this is the GT3 of sim racing rigs. Now I'm looking forward to jumping over and doing a few more laps in the Carrera GT of uh, sim racing rigs. So uh, full motion, I had a chance to drive this earlier today and set my absolute uh, best lap at Road America ever in that. And I'm uh, looking forward to driving that some more. All right, so the first thing you notice sitting in this is the motion, which is obvious when you have a full motion rig. But when you sit here, the word motion just isn't, doesn't say enough. You actually feel everything happening in the car. All the bumps, all the curbs, 
obviously you're going to feel that in the motion rig. But driving this, what I really notice more than anything is you feel what the car is doing underneath you. So when you're coming down this straight here and you're going downhill and you put on the brakes, you feel the car get unsettled. You feel where the limit is. When you turn and you get on the gas, you feel the tires start to get loose in the back. You feel the whole back end start to come around. So you really know when you can go a little faster and when you need to let off a little bit, when you need to brake. All the sensation of being in a real race car, you feel in this full motion rig. So you can tell how it's shaking, but right here going around the carousel, I can feel the back end start to come around. And I know when I need to be a little gingerly around that corner, especially the kink here, you really feel it get unsettled. Under heavy braking here, you can start to feel the ABS. And you can feel the weight transfer of the car. You probably can see that. It starts to come around and you realize you're on the limit. That's why I got a better lap in this sim racing rig, because I can really tell where that limit is. That was fun. I am all sweaty. What a, what a great sensation sitting here and feeling every aspect of the car driving on the track. From hard braking and accelerating, that was just amazing. Joe, tell me why I'm feeling all that. Uh, so there's a lot of reasons. Uh, the main one is that I've spent a few thousand hours working on the design for the simulator. Uh, so any sim that we provide comes with essentially my background and the feedback that we've gotten from hundreds of track drivers and thousands of people uh, that have tested out the sim. Uh, so a lot of the feedback that you get comes from the motion rig. It's a six degree of freedom, like you said, full motion. So each uh, motion of the car itself translates to a specific motion of the simulator. So when you're starting to feel the back end step out, that's actually a combination of sway, which is the side to side movement, uh, yaw, which is the rotational movement and also pitching. So you also get a lot of feedback from the wheel. And then also the butt kicker, which is kind of like the icing on the cake, gives you that haptic sensation. Our special combination of those three is how you're getting the feedback there. And that's how you can feel the weight transfer of the car. It's when you can feel the, the ABS kicking in or the understeer, um, like Manny might have just experienced a little bit right there. <laughs> what do you think, Manny? It is, uh, it is incredible. I've driven other, uh, other motions uh, rigs, and, and they're so uh, over, I guess, animated that I remember thinking, boy, if my car did this, I would pit immediately because something's wrong. But with this, within the first lap, you forget that you're driving a simulator. It gives you the same feeling, really, as a, as a car, as far as uh, weight management goes, the feedback it gives you. I can actually feel the rear of the car getting light, even though there's nothing behind me. There's no uh, car, it's all simulated. But it, it certainly gives you that sensation of weight transfer. Um, I, I could easily see how much it could save you on the track. All the dollars you spend at a track uh, uh, getting a set up and how things change from 10 o'clock in the morning to 2 in the afternoon. And you, you can keep this constant and learn so much about the car while also learning about the track. It's uh, very impressive how realistic it is. That's music to our ears. Thank you very much.